Okie doke. Come back. I'm thinking, since it's dark, there's not a whole lot of light. You know, the camera's not taking in a whole lot. and Not taking in a whole lot. Maybe, uh, maybe it's not using as much memory as if it was bright and colorful and more information to record. And, uh, so maybe dark videos, or, you know, mostly audio, would uh, and get more out of it. Maybe, maybe 23 minutes, maybe 24 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, who knows. So I was considering just letting it go until it cut me off, just to see. But I suspect this, this one will only be... This will be the last one of these. Uh, so, what was I terraforming? <laughs> terraforming the Earth. Yes. But anyway, with the Sahara, you know this this forum post that I was reading, you know, I'm glad that somebody put forward this question, you know, and you have to, I, I, I think about these questions all the time, you know, if we could amass, you know, if we could have everybody work together for the good of life, for the planet, for everything, you know, so that we can we can be better, we can have more people, more food, more sustenance, more habits, habitats, not habits, habitats, you know, make the planet a place that we are in more control of, and that is the direction that we're going, so, you know, suck it up, and we have to go in that direction, because just what we are. So, so what to do with the Sahara? Now, canals, Mars, Canali, you know, uh, that's essentially what I think we need to do. But there's a lot of ways. You know, there's, there's other technologies as well. I mean, putting, you know, directing uh, currents, um, putting more moisture into the air so that it can travel longer distances through the air and uh, spread, you know, so it doesn't totally just uh, break up before it gets, like, to the middle of the Sahara. But anyway, these uh, they're called mega lakes, or at least they call them. You know, some people call them mega lakes. Um, that ran up, essentially north, up the middle of the Sahara, from about Chad, and maybe a little bit over into Niger, maybe a little bit over into is it Sudan, um, South Sudan, North Sudan, or just Sudan. And uh, even Egypt, a little bit maybe in Egypt, but uh, also over in Algeria and uh, in Tunisia. And Tunisia is a little country on the Mediterranean, it's north, central Africa, or central North Africa, which central north is probably a better way of describing it. But Anyway, so there were these lakes and river systems, because it's shallow there. But, uh, you know, and, and some of these documentaries that I watched and pages that I read, you know, they suggest that there's these cycles, you know, because obviously the earth processes, you know, we get this, uh, wobbling, I don't like when people just call it wobbling, you know, 
session. Use the term. People will pick up on it and learn it. That's what we do. It's our vocabulary is developed. You want smart people, you know, talk to them like you would a smart person. And people will pick up on it. But if you treat smart people like idiots, then they will remain uneducated. And uh, they, they just won't learn. They won't learn these things. So, if you know big words, if you know the proper terminology, use it. So, the earth processes. And what procession is, is a sort of wobbling on its axis. Small. You know, like a, um, a gyroscope, or you spin a penny. And they're slightly different because they don't so much have their center of gravity like the Earth does, and nothing greater. At least not beside the sun nearby. But, uh, yeah, there's like a, a gyroscope. You spin a gyroscope, eventually it starts to... say that this, you know, 21, to, there's different, different cycles. I think one cycle is about 26,000 years, and the other uh, is 21,000, or the one leads to the other. Uh, but basically, you know, there's a... Uh, the way that I like to explain it to people is, uh, so the Earth, right now, what is the angle? It's, I don't know, about 23.4, it's either 23.44 degrees or 23 degrees 44 minutes. I might be completely off on the last numbers, but I think it's about 23 degrees. Three and a half, let's say, degrees, and uh, it, it changes, it goes up to maybe 21 degrees, um, maybe e even more, I mean, when it was originally formed, before, was it, Thea, crashed into it, maybe Thea is what took it off, you know, it's uh, perfect, perpendicular uh, alignment with the plane of the solar system. <laughs> but, uh, for now, it's on an angle, and that angle wobbles. Well, when it's not such a great angle, and it makes its trip around the sun, revolves around the sun, uh, you get a larger change in seasons. But, when it's more, when the, the poles, the axis of the Earth, is perpendicular to the plane of the solar system, you get more uh, consistency, more uh, regularity. And, uh, apparently this is when we get more um, heating of the equator because the sun is pointed directly at the equator for longer. So, you know, at least the, uh, let me see, we got the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, and that is, those are the two um, parallels or latitudes that, uh, that the, uh, where the sun is directly overhead. You know, if you go north of the Tropic of Cancer, the sun rises and sets in the south. If you go south of the Tropic of Capricorn, the sun rises and sets in the north. I suspect. 
Yes. <laughs> I've never been down there, so I'm just wondering, you know, if I make statements like this. I'm like, I never 100% thought about that. But anyway. So. Uh, anyway, between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, you get a lot of sunlight throughout the year. Um, the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, they shift though. They shift and they go, um, I'm just put it right on, I'm fairly certain this is right, but, um, you know, 21, 21.5 degrees, uh, north to about 25 degrees north for the Tropic of Cancer. When the Tropic of Cancer is only 20, 21 degrees north, then the sun is heating the equator more. And so you're getting more water evaporating. And uh, more water evaporating leads to uh, more moisture in the air, in, the, in that part. Um, in that part of the world, around the equator, around the tropic. So, during that period, you know, I'm sure it lags a little bit, you know, just like uh, temperature and the seasons do. There's a bit of lag, you know, between, uh, like right now, it's December 25th. Days are actually getting longer. The days are also getting colder. And uh, I think January will probably be the coldest, maybe February. Who knows? Who knows this year? But the point is. I turn out? We need an inflatable snowman. We don't even have any snow. There's a little pile of snow. Probably can't see it. There's a little tiny, tiny pile. Some truck pushed up. Um, here, you can hear it. to the Sahara. We can wait. I mean, we can wait, but we've already changed things, though. I mean, are we going to speed it up? Increasing all this carbon dioxide? Increasing the water vapor? Increasing... Uh, are we increasing the methane? Probably. I think we are. We are thickening our atmosphere. Bit. Just a little bit by a little bit. And, you know, um, obviously things haven't been working like this forever. And there have been like five, at least five major ice ages. You know, I remember the Huronian and the Cryogenian. Even the Huronian becomes divided into the Cryogenian. I know the Cryogenian is divided into the uh, Huronian took place uh, 2.2 billion to 2.5 billion years ago. 
check if you're curious if any human actually watches this. Um, that's neat. Um, okay, so I said 2.2 to 2.5 for the Huronian Ice Age, which took place in. Come on, one of those. Epochs. It's between two Ryo something and maybe something that starts with an S. There were. I'm not really sure. I'm gonna make a fool of myself here, but the proto proterozoic. Um, let me see. Archean. Well, there's a Hedean in the Archean, and then there's the then there's the prot uh, Paleoterozoic, maybe, and then the Proterozoic. Uh, but then even the what I'm, I'm thinking of is the Paleoterozoic would be broken up into one, two, three, three, maybe four uh, divisions. <laughs> and then those four, maybe, would be broken up into, you know, and the, they're really easy, too. Why, why I forget them? You know, there's the... Uh, Pro. Wait, there's the Paleo, the Meso, and the Pro, I think. Three? I swear it's four. I really shouldn't dwell on this too much, but. <sighs> I'm gonna go with four. I know there's three parts, you know, beginning, middle, end. I think it's four. Uh. But then even that four is broken down even into more. Um, those four take place over uh, fractions of a billion of years. I wish there was like a really, really easy way to break it up, but it, it's just not, you know, it, just because we want things to be ten hundred thousand million, billion, doesn't quite work out that way, but it's almost, almost, you know, you got your, your billions, your hundreds of millions, your tens of millions, and then your millions, and, uh, the billions, there's approximately four of them, the Hadean, Archean, I don't even want to say it because I think I'm going to do it and get it wrong. But there's the, uh, you know, the last, ever since the Cambrian, we're, we're now in the last one. I think there's, they break that up into four, four parts, I, I think. I'm, I'm going to stick to that. You know, I'm probably wrong. There's probably like three, and then nine, and then. I think about way too many things. I wish, I wish, I wish science wasn't so freaking interesting and all the things that could be studied. You know, there's just too, too much. There are too many things to think about. There are too many subjects that are interesting, that are fascinating. Why I just, you know, it's why I took up physics and astronomy to begin with. Because they kind of sum things up. You know, chemistry is another good one. Biology, eh, biology starts to really focus in, you know, just on the life part of Earth. But chemistry, pretty universal. As far as I know, I don't know. What chemistry is like in, you know, areas of dark matter and dark energy. And, you know, those the voids between the galaxies, maybe. Maybe there are different rules for chemistry. 
but I doubt it. Physics, same thing. Probably the same throughout most of the galaxy. But it's possible, and this is another thing I've been thinking about, is that there could be gradients. Gradients for the constants. And I know that probably that might not make any sense. You know? But it might be how we come to find ourselves in this bubble of time. Maybe it's not so much that, you know, 46 billion light years out there uh, is sort of an edge of the, uh, you know, the, the universe. But maybe it's just that the gradient. Maybe it's all we're in like this little bubble of certain constants. They're specifically, you know, the way they are right where we're at. But then it's possible that, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know. This seems really ludicrous when we look in all directions and things are roughly. Um, roughly the same in all directions. I guess I could, you know, try to explain that away with, it's, it's how we see it from inside of this bubble, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Because if something different is coming in this, you know, into this, uh, layered sphere, I don't know, what would be a term for it? But, um, yeah, this is bubble, this series of bubbles. If something's coming in from one side and something completely different or something different is coming in from another side, you would think that we would see different things. It would look different once it reacts with what we are inside. With our, you know, with our devices. If we looked north, we should see one thing. and south, we should see another If we look in towards the, well, maybe not so much. I was going to say towards the center of the galaxy and then out from the center of the galaxy. But, no, it's too, maybe too local because well, a lot of other galaxies around us look much the same. So, uh, maybe a bad idea. But, something like that. You know, maybe there are... Uh, gradients for some things. Maybe not for gravity. Maybe not for anything electromagnetic. You know. But maybe, maybe for other things. Yeah, maybe. Uh. But. Three minutes, 42 seconds, you know. I suspect it's a run out. I'm going to try to let this run out on its own. And uh, just see where it goes. And what happens. I'll try to keep it interesting until then. I, thought, uh, I don't want to get too interesting and then have it cut me off and then lose a train. <laughs> Derail. Not that it's not that it matters. Thoughts. They're ephemeral. You know, come and go. And they're free. Or somewhat free. Acquired chemical energy. But, uh, pretty much does its thing. I don't think it messed a whole lot in it. And just keep this body alive while the brain functions. And yeah, when the body dies and the brain dies. Brain dies, body dies. Yeah. People will go on. That's that's awesome to me, really. I'm so glad that life has managed to do this. It's pretty freaking amazing. Uh, well, 
like these blues. Not so much these blues. Like, not really that blue. It's more of a whitish blue, but that sort of a blue. I don't know how the camera's going to pick it up, but it's starting to get there. Starting to get towards sort of a, I don't know what to call it. Like, indigo? Or almost, almost like ultraviolet. But there's some some of these lights though. They are, you know, indigo and violet. They're really I like these new ones. At least around here they've been out for two, three, five, ten tops years. Yeah, they've been putting out these purplish purplish blue or bluish purple <laughs> lights. So they're really neat. But, uh, oh look, stars, stars that shoot the camera won't be able to see. Can you at least see the moon, please? Please show the moon. Okay, that thing that's in the center there, pretty sure that's the moon. First quarter. One's behind quarter, half. It's a phase though, it's measuring a phase. Full moons, half moon. New moons. Uh, new moon is a whole moon? That doesn't make sense. Oh man, I love those old those old uh, gas meters the wheels in them they make like a really screechy noise when it's cold up here up up here up as as if north is up there's Cassiopeia let's see what I can see there's not there's not a whole lot of windows in the clouds but I can see uh, Cassiopeia just uh, almost straight overhead, a little to the north. Um, Big Dipper should be walking along the northern horizon right now, or maybe working her way up. Ursa Major, Great Bear. This is not one of those videos. You know, I don't do enough videos where I just talk about constellations. I think that's something I'd like to do more often. But in order to do that, I should get a sort of camera that takes in light longer. You know, get longer exposure. And, uh, and then sort of like zoom in on a particular constellation. And, uh, and then just, just talk about it. Talk about the stars. Talk about, you know, the objects in it. And, far away things are. Just like being back in the planetarium. That's what I like. Just, not enough people look up. Not enough people think about what's going on out there. 29 minutes. I told you. I said 30 minutes. Could die any time though. I'll give it. If it dies any moment now, I'll, I'll take it. But still, 29 minutes. Few, few light. We'll see. So the more light I put in it, the shorter it's going to be. Uh, um, let's see what else am I seeing up here? Mm, looks like Perseus. Yep, I do see uh, Perseus kind of overhead too. A little to the east. Maybe it's hard now. I'm getting where the street lights. The street lights are bother, and trees, trees by the sidewalk are bother as well. Uh, I should move. 
away from these. But if this, if these windows are gonna open up, then maybe I will do sort of a talky astronomy video. I just turn this into that. I do see Orion though. Orion, my favorite constellations because I, I recognize it every every time. You know, you can't you can't forget Orion. You know, a lot of people though, a lot of people don't know how to find the Big Dipper. I'm finding a surprisingly large, uh, you know, some people don't know any constellations. None. None to them. These are just uh, lights in the sky or something. I don't know. They just say they're stars. They don't, they don't know anything about them. You know, some people know a good amount, though. And I'd say a good amount for your average person is more than the Big Dipper and, and Orion. If any, if anybody ever comes up to me, you know, and I start talking about constellations or something, or planets or anything, and they can point out anything in the night sky besides the moon, uh, Orion, and the Big Dipper. Um, I am, I am impressed mildly, uh, thoroughly. Like if, if, if they can carry on, but that is so rare. It is so rare, and that's kind of why it's my job. You know, to a lot of people, it's just not important. To some people. so occupied with their lives, with their, you know, bills and stuff, but I guess that's a good thing, we, we all make up for each other's shortcomings, you know, we get specialists in homemaking, and specialists in tool making, and specialists in street making, and Plumbers. Oh, here's a nice, nice little scene. Oh, that's nice. What are their big pipes? I like those big pipes. Big chimes. Big thick wind chimes. I don't, I don't so much like church bells, but I do like these. Maybe because it's random, you know. I think that's definitely it. It's random. Church bells are on a schedule. They're programmed. And I, I love this willow tree as well. Here we have light, which will take up memory. Oh my goodness, I'm still zoomed in. Uh, let me zoom out. Let's look at it zoomed in. See how crazy it looks. I'm zoomed in. Yeah. Isn't that fuzzy? Guess what that is? Guess what that is? Uh, let's zoom out. I'm 33 minutes now. A little bit better. About a about a week ago, December 23rd, I think, I uh, had the idea of just walking around town and uh, and walked around the whole town and getting every display. Now, obviously, that would take a lot of energy. Not a whole lot, but a bit, a little bit. <laughs> um, but I, I thought it would be nice. But I think about things like that so often, so frequently, that I actually don't generally wind up doing it. Snowman. 
the end, I think, or a grocery bag blowing around. Which is it? Uh, deflated snowman, but it's plugged in, so. Five minutes. I am impressed. We'll see. Maybe I can get a lot more. Maybe, maybe uh, the video part of this. Such a huge part. Maybe I can go an hour. Oh man, a gigantic window has just opened up over my head. Um, let's see. I do definitely see Perseus. I see. Uh, Taurus and the Pleiades. I see. Uh, is that Ophiuchus or Origa? I think it's Origa, the charioteer. Um, what else do we got? Yeah, it's definitely, definitely starting to open up. Um, yeah, I should not be confusing Ophiuchus and Origa. It is something I, something I did early on, and you know you make those little, those little mistakes, and they just stick with you. I, I do the same with uh, what is it? Formal hot. Is it formal hot? And I think there's two different stars that rise. Another one that even rises in the south, and it looks you know it's going around. And, uh, you don't align yourself. And area. Yeah. 